Convicted killer Jacob Weidman walks out of prison and reporter Dave Biscoming from our Phoenix affiliate ABC 15 is on his tail. Do you feel that you're a danger to the public at all? Absolutely not. But the father of the 16-year-old boy he brutally murdered says he's scared and the public should be too. I am convinced that this guy, he will go and do it again. And you're not going to believe who's fighting to get him set free. His prison psychologist, who's also now his wife. Everything that a woman would want in a man. And get this, she's the second prison shrink to marry Weidman behind bars. And she's apparently willing to put her career on the line for the convicted killer. How do you feel about the state terminating your contract? On an August night 31 years ago, summer camp ended in murder in Flagstaff, Arizona. 16-year-old Eric Kane savagely stabbed while he was sleeping by another then 16-year-old fellow camper, Jacob Weidman. None of us know why he brutally murdered Eric. Police say there was no motive for the murder and Weidman wasn't provoked in any way. At the time, Jacob, the son of best-selling author John Edgar Weidman, blamed it on a buildup of a lot of emotions. Crime itself was uh, despicable. Jacob Weidman was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. And because of the random nature of the killing, the judge recommended he never be released. A recommendation Eric Kane's father hoped would be followed. To prevent another father from having to experience what I've experienced for the last 30 years. While Eric's father experienced decades of grief over losing a child, his son's killer was busy wooing women behind bars. Dr. Marta DeSoto is the second prison psychologist who Weidman convinced to say, I do. We did everything we could to ensure that no uh, violations of policy were taking place. But after our Phoenix affiliate ABC 15 notified the Arizona Department of Corrections about the marriage, Dr. DeSoto lost her lucrative contract with the state. What do you think about what they said about your marriage to him? That it was inappropriate, they have significant problems with it? I have no comment. The former prison therapist pleaded with the clemency board to release Weidman so he could live with her, but DeSoto's ex-husband is begging to keep the convicted killer away from his kids. Please keep my children safe. Despite the strong objections, in late November, Jacob Weidman was released from prison and sent to live in a Phoenix halfway house just a few miles from his wife. Three months later, the convicted killer's parole officer let him move into his own apartment under house arrest. This is the Arizona Board of Executive Clemency, and I will invite Mr. Weidman to come forward. And now the convicted killer wants full parole. I don't think anyone can look at the record that I've established over the last six months and find reasons why against that. I cannot agree. Earlier this month, Arizona's Clemency Board unanimously rejected Weidman's request for full release. We need more time to monitor Mr. Weidman's transition. Since he was let out in November, the board has changed members. Many say the decision to release Weidman was too lenient. By phone, Eric Kane's father voiced his outrage. I was devastated. I never expected them to do what they did. But the original decision can't be undone, so unless Jacob Weidman violates his parole, he will not be going back to prison. And for now, the murderer remains under house arrest. Any reaction at all to, the, to their denial? No. Joining me now from Phoenix is reporter Dave Biscobing from our affiliate ABC 15. Dave, five times Weidman had been denied parole. Why do you think the sixth time he was allowed out? Who knows? I was there. I didn't see it coming. It was a big surprise. Now, I think it's important to point out that the board members who voted to release him, none of them are on the board anymore. So I think Weidman got lucky because I don't think it would happen again. So, Dave, I know Weidman came from money. His father is a famous author. Do you think that had anything to do with the parole board's decision? Yes and no. I mean, I don't think the money had or his father's position had anything to do with him actually getting released. but. He had a pretty high-powered, high-priced legal team, so the money certainly had an impact in the fact that he had a big team helping him fight for release all of these years. At the time of his arrest, didn't Weinman also confess to another murder? Yeah, he confessed to murdering a college student in Wyoming. Now, he recanted that, but then later admitted that he confessed to that crime because he wanted to get the death penalty. You'd think with the history, there was no way he'd ever get out of prison. Dave, one last question. What's next for Jacob Weinman? How long can they keep him on supervised release? 
indefinitely. Um, he basically is going to be under supervised release until the board grants him full parole. Now, what's next? Well, the victim's family has alleged some allegations saying that he may have violated the terms of his release and the Department of Corrections is investigating. So if they find that he did violate the terms of his release, and I'm not saying that he has, but if it happened, he could go back to prison. All right, thank you again. Fascinating case, that's for sure. Reporter Dave Biscoping from affiliate ABC 15 in Phoenix, thanks so much for the update.